Hello everyone. Thanks for choosing this video. Today I will share with you my thoughts about what I believe are the main achievements of trichoscopy. First and most importantly, I believe it is an achievement that trichoscopy exists. For many of us, for dermatologists who are taking care of patients with hair loss, a dermoscope is a device which is so important in everyday life just as a smartphone or a laptop. Second, trichoscopy serves mainly early diagnosis of hair loss and I would like to show an example how useful it may be in some situations. Please take a look at this woman. Before trichoscopy, nobody would believe that she has a hair problem. But when using a dermoscope, you may see some beginnings of a disease. If you take a look at this trichoscopy image, you will find a decreased number of hairs per follicular unit and follicular units which are consisting of two hairs one thick and one thin hair. This is a feature which distinguishes female androgenic alopecia from telogen effluvium. In telogen effluvium, every hair in a follicular unit has almost the same thickness, whereas in female androgenic alopecia, you will see one thick and one thin hair. The thin hair is a miniaturized hair, and then it undergoes ongoing miniaturization until at one point it disappears and it will leave a follicular unit with only only one hair. And this is a major difference between female androgenic alopecia and telogen effluvium. Here again a trichoscopy image which shows these typical follicular units with one thick and one thin hair, typical for androgenic alopecia, both in women and in men. Number three, thanks to trichoscopy, it is possible to improve the quality of pathology and of pathology reports. When you take a look at this field of view in psoriasis, then regardless where you take the biopsy, here or maybe here or here, then basically the pathologist will see psoriasis everywhere. However, in a patient with cicatricial alopecia, but also in other forms of hair loss, if you take a biopsy in the wrong place, for example here, the pathologist will see only fibrosis but will not be able to make the differential diagnosis between a various type of cicatricial alopecia. So you have to take the biopsy from the right place just to be able to show the pathologist what you really want him to see. These are the lymphocytic infiltrates in the perifollicular area. So taking the biopsy in the right place in a patient with androgenic alopecia is of crucial importance. I would like to briefly show you how I perform trichoscopy guided biopsy. I start with the clinical evaluation. Here I perform trichoscopy and then I mark, usually with a gentian violet marker, the area which I believe is an area of interest. However, then I check again. When I recheck with trichoscopy and I believe that the area which I have chosen is not the perfect one, then I would probably make a second mark and choose another area for the biopsy. And then I perform a biopsy in the area which was marked with this gentian marker. There's one thing I would like to draw your attention to this is when you use the markers regardless what type usually the area is wet for a moment after making the mark and it is important when you recheck trichoscopy before taking a biopsy it is important to wait for a moment for the area to dry because otherwise you will destroy your field of view and also if you use a contact dermoscope then you'll destroy also the field of view of your dermoscope number four trichoscopy allows non-invasive monitoring of treatment efficacy. And here I will also use an example to show how it can be done. We all know, and I already mentioned this as well, that in patients with androgenic alopecia, the number of hairs per follicular unit is usually decreased. The normal number in a healthy person is between two and three, on average two and a half. However, in patients with androgenic alopecia, both women and men, we will see the majority of follicular units having one or two hairs. So I have chosen the follicular units with three hairs as my marker of treatment success in patients with androgenic alopecia. I calculate the number of hairs per follicular unit. Usually I do it in four fields of view and I calculate the average percentage of follicular units with three hairs. If the number is increasing, this means that my treatment is effective and I can go on with the same type of treatment. But if this number is stable or decreasing, then we should think about changing the treatment strategy. 
Number five, predicting hair regrowth. Predicting hair regrowth is extremely important for both the patient and the doctor. And here I will use an example of alopecia areata to show how we can predict the hair regrowth in these patients who are treated for at least two months. And then after two months, we perform trichoscopy. And based on these findings, even though there is no regrowth yet visible clinically, we can already judge whether or not our treatment treatment is effective. And there are negative points. These are the exclamation mark hairs, the tapered hairs, the black dots and the broken hairs, and some positive points, the upright regrowing hairs and the pigtail hairs. And this allows calculating the alopecia reata predictive score. And it was calculated that if the alopecia reata predictive score is between 1 and 2, then the probability of hair regrowth is very high. However, if our score is below 0, this means we have to change the treatment strategy. Number six, suspecting systemic diseases. Currently, with trichoscopy, you are able to suspect many systemic diseases, and they include systemic lupus erythematosus, dermatomyositis, scleroderma, and many others. Here, I am showing an example which is not very rare. I have received these images from a colleague from Athens, and please take a look. This woman has multiple hairless patches with quite a short history. To me, these patches look probably like cicatricial alopecia. And one may be surprised when we see the image of trichoscopy. Here we see multiple dots, mainly yellow dots, but also some black dots, maybe two regrowing hairs. So please think what is your diagnosis at this point. And now I will show you another field of view in the same patient. And this is another field of view also in the hairless patches. And here you see multiple thick arborizing vessels, but also what is striking here you see no dots, what may make the impression of of cicatricial alopecia, but this combination is quite characteristic. And these are breast for cancer metastasis. This was confirmed cancer by a biopsy metastasis. and then by further investigation of the patient. So this shows how a dermatologist can suspect a very severe non-dermatological disease on the basis of trichoscopy. Trichoscopy is almost 20 years old and I believe that during this time it has achieved really a lot with the most important function being the differential di diagnosis of the causes of hair loss and most importantly very early diagnosis of several diseases which manifest with the loss of hair. The next achievement of trichoscopy is the trichoscopy guided biopsy. The trichoscopy guided biopsy allows taking the biopsy from the right place. You will make your pathologist happy because he will have the characteristic features of a certain type of hair loss on his slide and you will be happy because you'll get the right answer from the pathologist and your patient will be happy because he will get a diagnosis. So I believe the trichoscopy guided biopsy should be the standard of care when we take a biopsy in a patient with hair loss. Next, monitoring. We can use trichoscopy for monitoring treatment efficacy and sometimes we will see some features which are a sign of regrowth before we even can see these features clinically. Next, prognosis. And I think this is important from the practical point of view because everybody is interested in the prognosis and we all know that that hair loss is very important for the quality of life. And if we can predict that the patient is likely to have hair regrowth, then definitely it is of significant importance for the patient. A developing field in trichoscopy is the possibility to suspect a systemic disease on the basis of trichoscopy. This is usually possible because many diseases manifest with abnormalities in the blood vessels, which may be visible on the scalp. So I believe here we are far from reaching the limits of trichoscopy. And last, it is important that trichoscopy exists and that it is easy accessible to every medical doctor and to every dermatologist. With a simple handheld thermoscope, which is our everyday tool, we can perform trichoscopy evaluation. Of course, we may decide to have a digital device. It is useful for hair experts, but for everyday practice of a general dermatologist or a general practitioner, I I believe that the handheld dermoscope is perfectly sufficient. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please click a like and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.